In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to master the topic of elastic potential energy, which is energy that's stored in something because of a change in the size of the object. Other channels cover the content, but I'm here to help you get the grade 9 in your GCSE physics. So elastic potential energy is energy that's stored in an object because of a change in size, and it has the ability to return to its original shape. We came across this context when we were looking at Hooke's law itself, and we're going to take it a little bit further because we're going to talk about energy in this video. So I asked you, well, what would happen if you were to pull the catapult back further? The, the pellet would go faster and it would go further because you'd actually would have stored more energy in the elastic store of the elastic. So that is an elastic potential energy, we call it. The elastic stores energy, which has the potential to be converted into kinetic put it back further and you get more energy. Now, actually, if you pull it back twice as far, you actually get four times the amount of energy and that's gonna come out through the maths in this video. What about if you use a stiffer elastic though? Pause the video and think about that. Try and use these words in the answer, force, extension, energy, and spring constant. And that spring constant means the stiffness of the spring, of the elastic in this case. Well, actually the stiffer it is, the more energy you get stored as well, but actually they're proportional. So if you have twice the stiffness of the spring, you actually have twice the value of energy. Now this has other applications, other contexts as well. For example, Eliud Kipchoge, he ran a marathon in less than two hours. Now it's not a legitimate world record because it wasn't done under race conditions. And he was also wearing these shoes, which they're not sure if they're gonna ban these or not. And Nike claimed that these shoes return 4% extra energy for every foot strike that a runner does. They're saying that they're essentially more efficient shoes, 4% more efficient, and they call them Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. The basic idea is that as you do a foot strike, you store the energy as elastic potential energy, and then there's a rebound effect which returns some of that energy into kinetic energy. So effectively making all of the run more efficient. So here's the equation. It's one that you get given, you don't have to remember it. You can think about it as energy stored in stretching something or elastic strain energy it's called, or elastic potential energy. Basically, and the thing to remember about this is that energy is proportional to extension squared. If you double the extension, you get four times the elastic potential energy. So it's an equation you get given. On some GCSEs, you get given it in words, in others, in algebra as well. Energy stored in a spring is a half times the spring constant times the extension squared. This is the way I'm going to write it, e, EL for elastic strain energy is 0.5 or a half, I'll write sometimes K delta X squared. Now the delta just means changing and X means length, so delta X together means extension. In AQA I know they write it as E, E, so E little E equals a half K E squared. Now I don't like to use the little E because that looks too much like the exponential number, which we do use a lot in physics. But these are the same equations, so you can use whichever one you're most comfortable with. If we take some extensions and we measure the energy Energy that we get from a spring then we can see this relationship that energy is proportional to extension squared and that relationship is a y is proportional to x squared relationship if you double the extension you quadruple the energy it's essentially all that's showing there double the extension then you get quadruple the energy stored in the spring have a little play around with the energy FET sim. Simulations are excellent ways to get your head around difficult concepts and FET sims are the best simulations that are out there. So find this FET simulation and change things like the spring constant, change things like the extension and notice the difference in energy that's stored in the springs that you're using. You should notice that if you double the spring constant, you double the potential energy. You should also notice if you double the displacement, you quadruple the potential energy. Energy, remember, the stored energy in a spring varies with extension squared. So as you see this value here, this graph of displacement, that's extension versus energy, it's an x squared relationship. So if you double the extension, you actually quadruple the energy stored. Let's just show you that. 0 0.5, I've got that much energy, a little bar chart on the side there to represent it double that to one, I have four times the stored energy. It is really crucial that you do measure things in SI units in physics. So in this case, we want elastic strain energy in joules, and we need to therefore have the spring constant in newtons per meter and the extension in meters. Here are some examples of using this equation. I'm gonna go through these in a moment, but pause the video and have a go. This is an equation that you get given on a formula sheet in an exam, so you don't have to memorize it, but you do need to know how to use it. They're all about calculating the energy, so let's just have a go. 
Whenever we do any calculation in physics, we always begin by writing out the equation. And it's going to save you time if you use algebra. This means the elastic strain energy, a half is just a number, k is the spring constant, and delta x means extension, and you square that value when you put it into the calculator. Then you look at your question and you identify the numbers and you check that they're in the, in the right units. So I have the spring constant k is seven newtons per meter. Yep, that's fine. And I also have the extension is three and it is in meters, so that is in the correct units. Now I can input those into the equation. So I just copy down everything that I don't have and I just write in the numbers now instead of the algebra. And now I reach for the calculator and I type that in 0 0.5, 31.5 joules, capital J for joules. So the next one, again, we start by writing out the equation. Then we write down the values that we're given, checking that they're in the correct units in newtons per meter and in meters so that's absolutely fine now we'll write down the same equation but inputting the values this gives us a much less chance of actually going wrong if we do it this way so there's a few reasons why you should show all your working even if you think you're too bright and you're just going to go straight to putting all your values in the calculator the first one is that the examiner could give you credit for correctly substituting into an equation even if you've subsequently done something wrong the next one is if you want to check your work you can actually read through and look at what you've done and make sure you haven't made any silly errors yourself and the third one is that actually when you get good at this when you get practiced it doesn't take you really much longer to do it this way around because it just becomes very mechanical you don't have to think about it it's just the way you approach all calculations last one then start every single calculation by writing it out the spring constant is three newtons per meter the extension is 20 centimeters hang on a minute, that's not the right unit. So they've made this one a little bit harder by giving us a unit conversion. So I'm straight away just converting that into meters by dividing by 100. Then write down the equation, but putting in the values that we do know. You see how by doing it this long way around, I'm not really having to think about it. I'm just substituting the values that I've already identified. I really hope that helps. That's how you use this equation. It's a little bit tricky because it's got that square term in it. And it's a little bit tricky because often you'll be measuring extensions in centimeters or even millimeters at times, and you have to do the unit conversion there. So these are the slightly more tricky ones because they involve some rearranging. So this time we're gonna to have to calculate the spring constant of a spring when it's been extended by 0.25 meters if it stores 80 joules of energy. We're always going to start by writing out the equation we're going to use and identifying the data that we've got. So the extension is 0.25 meters. That's already an SI unit, so that's totally fine. And as is the elastic strain energy, which is 80 joules, it's already an SI unit, so we don't need to convert. Then I suggest you do this. This is the long way around, but I suggest you do this certainly until you get used to it. Input all the numbers and then go ahead and simplify. So I've actually done 0.25 squared and multiplied by a half here, and then I've rearranged for k. So 80 divided by all of that value gives me 2560 newtons per meter. Now you will find easier ways through that. You will find ways to do that a little bit quicker, but make sure you are showing your working out because you will get marks if you make any errors if you show your working out. Next one then, and they've made this one a bit more tricky because there are some unit conversions in there. So calculate the extension of a spring with a spring constant of 800 newtons per meter if it stores four kilojoules of energy. So again, we're gonna start by writing out the equation we're gonna use, and then we're gonna identify the values that we've been given. Um, this time we were given elastic strain energy as four kilojoules, so we're gonna actually convert that to 4,000 joules before we substitute them into the equation, and then simplify and then rearrange. So to this next step, I've just done a half times 800 to give me 400. Then I've done inverse operations to give me 4,000 divided by 400, and that's x squared. So x squared is 10, and this is a step that students often leave out, which is we aren't trying to work out x squared, we're trying to work out delta x. So we need to do root 10 to give us our final value of 3.16 meters. So that is the way that I suggest that you do all these difficult calculations, but this type of equation has a square term and it also has more terms in it than just our simple type of equation that we can maybe rearrange with a simple formula triangle or just simple inverse operations. 
There's different ways of approaching this and I suggest that you work out which one works for you. The first one is to make sure that you can do that under pressure in the exam, that you can input the numbers and you can do all the inverse operations to work out a final answer. The next one is to actually make sure that you can do the rearranging and that you can do the rearranging of the algebra and then substitute numbers in once you've rearranged the algebra. And the last one is just to do the rearranging before the exam and memorize the rearranged forms. So I'm gonna go through rearranging this equation into k equals and into delta x equals here. So let's start by moving the half. So we've got times a half on one side and the opposite of times a half is times by two. So we get two elastic strain energies is k delta x squared. And now we're just going to move the delta x squared because we want an equation that reads k equals. So two el over delta x squared is our rearranged form for k. So you can just memorize that and if it asks you for a spring constant and gives you an elastic strain energy and extension, you can work out your spring constant. Now what if you want to work out the extension and you've been given an energy and a spring constant? Well that's a little bit more tricky but it starts off exactly the same. Move the times by a half by doing times by two to both sides. It gives you k delta x squared. And now move the k. So times k becomes divide by k on the opposite side. Now you've got delta x squared equals and you want an equation which reads delta x. So the inverse of that, so the inverse of squared is root. Two el over k, all that rooted gives you delta x. So you could just memorize those and that would mean you wouldn't have to do that rearranging under pressure in the exam. And I strongly suggest if you're not so confident with your maths that that's what you do. If that was useful, hit the like button. So elastic potential energy is energy that's stored in an object because of its change in size. So they're pretty tricky calculations, but it's quite an easy concept to get your head around. Essentially, because the object can return back to its original shape, then it can release that energy. It can use that energy to do work, and that energy can be transferred into a kinetic store of an object. Now this conversion between potential and kinetic stores is a really important idea in physics and one for a longer video at some point. One of the most important ideas in physics is energy analysis and that's a really useful application of this physics. In this video, I calculate the speed of the dart by calculating the elastic potential energy and making that equal to the kinetic energy of the dart. This is a way they can make questions really tricky by asking you to calculate one thing and then using that to calculate another. But that's a video for another day. I do a pretty similar thing here for energy analysis. This is putting it all together because I have to work out a spring constant first and then use that to work out the energy transferred in stretching. Make that first calculated store of energy equal to another store of energy and you can work out another variable, another quantity in that store of energy. In both these cases, we have an elastic store of energy being transferred into a kinetic store of energy, but it could be any two stores. A bit more detail here about material behavior, which you will find out in A-level physics. The energy stored in the spring, which is a half k delta x squared, the, is proportional. The energy is proportional to extension squared. Double the extension, four times the energy. Thanks a lot for watching. That's been some of the hard stuff for elastic strain energy for forces and extension. Hooke's law, basically. Now, remember, Hooke's law is a really easy concept. Double the force, double the extension. But there's some really tricky and hard questions that they can ask you. And that will come down to things like the idea that energy is proportional to extension squared, or the idea that different things have different spring constants, or interpreting data from graphs and then using them to answer some questions. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Guerrilla Physics. Other channels, they show you the content, but I'm gonna show you how to get the grade nine. If that helped, if you got a lot from that explanation, then just comment yes sir in the comments below. If you've got any more questions, then comment in the comments below. Check out guerrillaphysics.com for all of my videos organized by topics. Give me a thumbs up if you found that video useful.